Okay, W, as you might know, stands for Wainwright. <laughs> Sally Wainwright, also a patron of this chapel, and this specially commissioned piece that she's written for us, which is set here on Norland Moor, <laughs> and is entitled The Final Frontier. I thought you'd change your mind. Traffic was bad through Sorby Bridge. <laughs> it's good of you to be here. Well, <laughs> here he is. What's protocol then? Well, you know as much as me. Did you get permission? Oh. Oh, I don't know how to get permission. Damn. Who do you think I should have asked? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, let's just do it. Is it the council? Do you think? Does anyone own it as such? I mean, it's more land. Oh, some bugger will. <laughs> I think it's the water board. Now you've said it. Really? He'd know. Andy. He'd know who owned it. <laughs> well, shall we ask him then? Are you all right, Andy, love? Oh, you've shrunk. Bad luck. <laughs> I think me and Daft Eddie were just wondering, do you know who owns the land here? Only we don't want to go scattering you everywhere and then get our asses kicked. We don't only have you to sweep up again. What are you being so snippy about? You, you dozy bugger, not getting permission. I left a meeting to come here. Oh, let's just get on with it. Come on. I mean, nobody will know. <laughs> I'm thinking this is the right spot. Sorry. Well, it's somewhere he liked. It's somewhere he would have chosen. I assumed you'd discussed it. When would we have discussed it? You and him. Yeah, when? When would we have had that conversation? I don't know, before he died. No. <laughs> Been handy if we had. I mean, it's the sort of thing people say occasionally, you know, where they want burying, scattering, whatever, you know, in a lighter moment, you know. Well, now, fully engaged with the fact that one day they really will cease to exist. Well, no, we haven't had that conversation. This was my idea. That's why I'm asking. It's not inappropriate, it's not, is it? I mean, he liked walking, he liked the great outdoors, he liked up here. Well, fine, fine. Well, I'm asking for an opinion. It's bad enough not getting permission without wondering whether it's what he wanted. No, it's fine. Just remembered. Him and Denise. Sunday afternoons in the summer. They used to drive up here with the kids, you know, when they were tiny. They'd have a picnic and they'd spend the afternoon laughing at that lot down there playing golf <laughs> with their daft hats and silly trousers, you know, <laughs> wiggling their backsides about when they were teeing off, you know, <laughs> like they were, like they thought they knew what they were doing, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, he likes to laugh, Andy. Yeah. So, um, yes, I mean, it's not inappropriate. Right. Shall I say a few words? <laughs> you should have asked Denise. If this is where he would have liked. I did ask Denise. Of course I asked Denise. I won't tell you what she said. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. Well, Andy lad, here we are, atop the world, on Norland Moor, clear view, all around, far as the eye can see. Atop? <laughs> you didn't just say atop. <laughs> you did, didn't you? What's wrong with that? You sound like Alan fucking Partridge. <laughs> 
Are you going to shut the... Are you going to shut up? What about kids? His kids! I phoned them. Both of them. After the funeral. They didn't want to know. Alison had already gone back to Toronto. There was still a lot of anger. Right. So. So. This is it. The final curtain. And he's ended up with us. It's mental. It's not ideal, I know. But we're his oldest friends. We're the people who've known him longest, so it's not without a certain poetry. Poetry? Atop the world. <laughs> oh -ho. Now, I was thinking about our first day at Sorby Bridge. In playground. Eleven years old in those uniforms. And how the three of us gravitated towards each other. And now, 55 years on, the, the three of us are here on the cusp of the next big, you know, the final frontier. I'm not comfortable with this. I mean, I'd not seen him for 20 years. Oh, it's been a while, certainly. But, you know, at our age, it hardly matters, does it? You know, five minutes and uh, it's like you've never been apart. But it's a fella's flesh and blood ought to be with him at a time like this. Whatever's happened, you know, whatever's gone on, I mean, it's fundamental. I don't disagree with you, Richard, I don't. But it's not what they want. They've made a choice and they've made it clear and they've asked us to do it. Well, me, but I'm glad you're here. So, so, it just doesn't need to be done, does it? Not now. Not today. I mean, it's not obligatory. You don't have to scatter ashes. It's not a legal requirement. You can keep them in a cupboard. Well, I don't think Hazel would be happy with me keeping Andy in <laughs> one of her cupboards. I think she might feel a bit overwhelmed. Not you, you... <laughs> wanker! Denise, or one of the kids. They might be cross with him now, but... In time, it could be something they regret, not having done it themselves. Well, I don't know. Denise was pretty clear she didn't want anything to do with them. <laughs> him. She didn't want him in the house. I'd wait, you know, put him in garage. Hazel won't know. She asked me to ring her. Denise, after it's been done, she wanted to know it had been done. Well, well, you better get on with it then. I consider it an honour that, you know, it's down to me, us. Really? Well, okay. No, no, I, I just think that in the greater scheme of things, that one day, the kids at least, you know, Alison or Ruth, you know, they'll have a different perspective. You know, I mean, we're all human. We all make mistakes, you know. And life's about the pursuit of happiness, and that's all that he was doing, you know. And, and actually, you know, he was trying to behave responsibly. Responsibly? He was having it up with another woman. <laughs> he had an heart attack and died in another woman's bed on the job. And then the next day, it's all over the TV and the newspapers. How is that responsible? I don't think he planned it. Well, he's disgraced himself, he's humiliated his family, and he's damaged the party. His party. The circumstances were unfortunate. <laughs> Granted. But the point, the point is, he, he hadn't left her in the lurch, the knees, had he? And he could have done. I mean, he could have left her behind years ago. Well, excuse me. But I think he might have been worried how that might look. Man in his position, I don't think he can attribute it solely to altruism. I think good public relations played a hefty role in his thinking about not running out on his marriage. The point is, the point is, I can understand why Denise doesn't want to do this. And the girls. Girls. The women. 
Yes, yes, yes. And, and the point I'm trying to make is that in a few years' time, tempers will not be so frayed, you know? But people may have a more objective view. They might remember all the good things he did as well as all the less, well, you know, and they might regret it, not having done something like this themselves. I've been asked, to, I've been allotted a task and I intend to carry it out. Well, I don't think you should. I think you should tell Denise we've discussed it and we're worried she's being rash. You just want to do it because you're a self-important little twat. <laughs> and you like the idea of being asked. And, and, uh, and what you can't see is that she's asked you for all the wrong reasons. And I knew you were me. She asked me to speak at the funeral. Well, never mind about asking me. Why didn't she ask one of the big smells you wear within the party, eh? I know what this is about. It's revenge. She asked you to speak at the funeral. She asked you to scatter his ashes. Some no mark he was at school with. Someone who she knew damn well he couldn't stand. Someone who she knew was probably too feckless to get permission to do it right. And probably in a place he couldn't give a toss about. This is about as ignominious a send-off as she could cook up for him. Getting you to do it. You have a very palsied view of the world, Richard. <laughs> if I may say so. No, think about it. She could have asked one of his colleagues to speak at his funeral. She could have asked anyone. She could, she could have asked Tristram Hunt or Dan Jarvis. But no. She asked... Daft Eddie. Eddie no mates. Whom he'd not seen for 20 years. You're not scattering his fucking ashes. He deserves better than you. No, no, no. <laughs> give. No. Give. No, no. Give no. Them, give them no, to me. Give no, them to me. No, no. Oh, bum. Is that hoss monkey's gone in? <laughs> well done. I shouldn't have said all that. Yeah, it's probably true. No, he, he thought world on you. I think I know he didn't. I don't think Andy thought the world of anyone very much. I thought world on you when you weren't being fucking annoying. <laughs> have you time for a pint? Or have you got to get back to this meeting? Oh, there's always time for a pint. Yeah, yeah.